Have you ever looked at all the gear musicians use and wonder, how does it all work? My name's Dustin and my family and I are setting out on a quest to inspire both adult and kid musicians to create new sounds together and learn all about what it takes to produce great music. We'd like to invite you along on the journey as we explore the gear professional studios, musicians, and hobbyists use to create their art. We'll take a close-up look at the gear and ask, What's this button do? Hello and welcome to this week's episode of What's This Button Do? I'm your host, Dustin, and this week we are taking a look at something so exciting that just showed up in the studio. Uh, right, I think it was back before COVID, several years ago, a company called T-Rex that makes the amazing replicator tape delay, they announced that they had acquired the rights to the old Benson Echo uh, Rec units and were working on making a modern version of the tape uh, magnetic tape delays. So I reached out, um, I, I got one on pre-order uh, the second they announced it, and this has been years. So it kept getting delayed, kept getting delayed, and then finally, they just announced that they are ready to start shipping the units. And then lo and behold, I got notification that mine was on the way and it has arrived here tonight. So I am going to open it here with you on the show. And then we're going to plug it in and hear the first sounds together. So this is going to be a raw video. It's going to be kind of funky, um, but I say we have fun with it. So join me over at the other desk and we are going to record the opening and try it out. All right, everybody, let's rip this open and see what we've got. I'm going to cut into the box top here. It's a massive box that it came in. Good Lord. Sorry if I'm bouncing around the camera on the screen here. It's going to take a little bit of doing to open up, but my gosh, it's worth it. Okay, let's see what we got in here. Oh my gosh, yeah. Just, just the words Echo Rec on that box make me very, very happy. Look at that, hold that up to the big camera there. Vincent Echo Rec from T-Rex. This thing is nuts. I'm gonna bring up the camera just a little bit so you guys can all see. Exactly what we're looking at here because this is super exciting So we're gonna take this little sleeve off there. Let's see if I can do it without ripping it all up And tone matters is what the box says and honestly got to say, like These are just every time t-rex makes something it just blows my mind away They've got this ultra sealed. I think they're really being protective this time, which is good. The first time I got a replicator, I had a couple little issues with it. Getting banged around and chipping. I don't think you're gonna have to worry about with this with these. It looks like they took a lot of care to make these really nice. Oh my gosh. Okay. Without really paying attention to anything else. Look how killer this is. Oh. Okay, so we got a little tool kit for it with everything that you'll need to repair it. It's even got some oil in there to oil the machine up. Looks like we got our power supply in here with all the universal adapters. Excellent. Tons and tons and tons of padding, but that is good because this is a massively, massively heavy unit. Good Lord, this thing weighs a ton. Let's move the box out of the way of the camera got our instruction manual, which is to be a pretty thick instruction manual. Mess with that a little bit. We've got our Echo Rec in the bag. Oh my gosh. That is just one gorgeous piece of hardware. I'm going to do it justice. Get it centered on the camera here so you guys can experience everything that we're seeing here. This is just an absolute work of art. I'm blown away. We're gonna get the plug-in out here because we are not gonna make you wait for this. We're just gonna plug it in, have some fun with it, and see what happens and see what kind of cool noises we can make. So let me get the plugs ready. I will plug all of this in and then I promise I will let you hear the raw sounds the first time that I make them. Give me two shakes and we'll be right back. 
Okay, first things first, before we plug this in and turn it on, I wanna show you a few features I'm noticing now that we're turning this on here. You'll notice the input section here. What they've done is they've actually got adjustable playback levels in here where you can do little uh, uh, micro adjustments. You've got a balanced input and a balanced output, so you can use a lot more sources than just guitar on here. You have your regular inputs here. You have an expression knob, I mean an expression pedal input over here for the speed, and then you have your bypass out. So there really is a lot of functionality here that you can use. So it's not just, it's a lot like the old real studio tape echoes. You can use this for a lot of other stuff besides just doing it with your guitars. All right, but hey, let's face it. We really, really want to see what it's like normally. Check that out. Oh my gosh. You hit the bypass knob, you get go. Oh. This is, this is going to be absolutely insane. Let's boot up the amps and let's see what happens. All right, let's dive into this. We're going to be using the Les Paul that we're going to be talking about on next week's episode. But what we're going to do is we're going to just take you through some of the basic settings on here. Um, I've been researching this a little bit um, just to know so we'd be prepared for this. Um, so I'm going to walk you through some of the things I've learned about this. So this is a major upgrade over the old Benson Echo Rec unit. So we're going to start with the original sounds and then we'll add in some of the newer sounds that it's got here. Um, so what's kind of cool is you'll see this recording short head versus long head. The original uh, delay units from Benson were set up in that short head position. Um, and what you'll see is it's not a traditional like a there was a very difference between the RE202 from uh, Boss slash Roland versus this, um, where typical delays had like a repeat echo, like you'd hit it and it'd go da dun da dun da dun da dun I want to show you the difference here. So we're going to turn this on, and we'll turn on like uh, two and four. And we've got it on the short head now. See how that, it's more of almost like a ambient kind of reverb mixed with a little bit of delay, but using delay to achieve that effect. So let's go like, we'll go by each playback head. So the first head was the short head. You can hear very much kind of like a slap back re, uh, reverb almost. Playback head two, same thing. Playback head three. Starts to fill that out a little bit and stretch out, and then playback four will be the longer. And if we turn the echo tone up a little bit, and maybe the repeats up a little bit, you can hear. See, it's just a beautiful delay, but it's not that long, super long, multi-millisecond kind of thing. On those original playback heads, um, in the short mode, the, uh, the playback head one was 46, and then playback head four went up to like 185. So it was never, never uh, a super long thing. I guess that was in the min. So it was like it on the maximum you could set it. It was, I've, I've got notes, uh, 87 milliseconds on playback head one, all the way up to 340 milliseconds on playback head number four. So if we had um, the, the delay maxed out uh, on the speed, or I guess minimized out. <laughs> And then you can hear if we speed it all the way up. It's some just really crazy. But that's about as high as you can go. That's that's about the maximum that you were able to take that. With this new switch over here, now you get more of a traditional delay. So if I go to playback one, and I'm gonna turn the delay time down just. See so slide baggy? Number two. See, much more traditional delay. Slap back three. You can hear. And then number four, really long. So now the max on like playback head number four is 531 milliseconds. So it's definitely got more length to it. You can get a lot, a lot more time out of these. But I want to show you one of my favorite tricks from back in the day. Um, in fact, I'm going to down tune here to D. So what you would see a lot of times, and because you can hear that, 
there's definitely a little bit of a hiss there and the more that you have that record volume up the more that you will notice it um, when you've got these heads on you hear that hissing sound so what people would do is turn that way down turn the record level way up so now we'll hear less hiss so you can actually take that all the way out but there's still a see so you can you can eliminate some of that hiss just by changing the way that your input's going in but what a lot of cool bands like uh, I think Tool, something with a little heavier with some distortion in it. What they would do is if they didn't want to delay, you could actually take uh, heads one, two, and three, turn your tone down a little bit so that it didn't make it so bright. Keep your repeats about one o'clock, and instead of using swell, we're going to stay right in the repeat mode. Now I'm going to add a little distortion, and I want you to hear what happens. So for So that's just my clean tone. Now we're going to add the distortion in. Hear how that sounds kind of like a reverb. So I'm going to turn the distortion back on. I'm going to sh turn. Okay, now we've got the Benson is completely out of the circuit. Now we're going to add the Benson in. See how it just fills out that spectrum and creates that wall of sound? It's really... But it doesn't sound like a traditional delay. It's not the old, here, we'll, uh, we'll take that out of the circuit for a second and just use my... Uh... It's not that. It's its own weird, cool thing. That's like more of that boss delay kind of sound, the digital delay. This fills a room and almost creates that reverb void that is just wild. And in fact, there's a really cool feature on here called Swell. And what this does is instead of doing repeats like a traditional delay, if you've got all these off, what that's basically doing is creating, I'll turn on. It's a reverb. And then if we add some of the heads in, you get a little bit of extra funky. that sounds and it just keeps decaying out gives you this really really neat sound but it's not anything that a normal delay would do completely completely funky but you can get traditional delay sounds out of here like i said before if we want to just do like heads two and four like i would a lot on a like an echo rec you can keep in this long mode here increase your speed up a little bit keep that record level up See, gorgeous. And then if you turn this up, you're gonna oscillate. And then you can turn the oscillation down. This allows for some really fun effects. And like you saw on the input panels back there, we can stick a microphone, a drum, any kind of cool thing that we want into here to get it to make that sound. So on drums, especially on like a snare or on a bass kick, you can really get some really fun echo onto there. And then on vocals, this makes for some gorgeous just background pad for a vocal. Ah, we'll have to experiment with that at a later time. But even back in this just short mode, I know it seems weird to talk about short delays. I always love the one, two, three, leaving number four out because with number four on, I'll show you. We add four in. You get more of that brrrm, brrrm kind of sound. I always liked leaving four off when I was doing. Whoop. 
Sorry, I still didn't drop D there. <laughs> so yeah, when you leave four off, you just get this really cool. It's just absolutely gorgeous. The pads that it sets down are, are, are amazing. And there's one other little trick that's kind of fun. I'm going to turn the recording up just a little bit. Take this along. Take the speed up to the middle where that's notched at. Just leave it right in the middle. Leave your record level up. And then we're going to take these repeats all the way up. Listen to the sustain. It almost freezes it in a moment of time, and especially when you're in a, uh, sort of turn off the tone just a little bit, and then I turn on some distortion. Now if you add in playback two, it repeats too much. You gotta be really careful. It really, if you take anything but playback head number one at full repeats is going to oscillate and give you too much craziness. But it, at feedback number or playback number one, just sustain. Absolutely gorgeous. It just holds that note and ties it out. So there are so many cool tips and tricks that you can use with this device to get you some just crazy, crazy sounds. That's just the start. Wait till we dig in this a little bit more once we've had some time to play with it. Well, that was exciting. I cannot believe how amazing that sounds. This is gonna be so much fun. I can't wait to get this on other sources like drums and vocals and keyboards just to mess around with it and see how, how it goes. I think it's gonna be a huge addition to the rack, not just for, for guitars, um, but for guitarists, I, I think it really is something super special. It's so different than a traditional delay. Um, would I give this up for, uh, give up my RE202 for this? No, I, I think the RE202 is still one of the best delays. It still has this beautiful sound in it that's just haunting um, that the Echo Rec can somewhat copy with that longer delay, but it doesn't really do the traditional delay thing. The Echo Rec is its own thing. It is this pad, reverb, echo, craziness. And that's what made the Echo Rec so special. It was just such a unique sound. And to accomplish it in the analog way, in the real magnetic style that T-Rex did, <laughs> bravo T-Rex, you nailed this. Um, I, I gotta say, it's very hard for me to find a lot of negatives to say about this. Um, I think on the pros side of things, um, first of all, the sound quality is amazing. The fact that you can turn up that record volume and turn down your master volume so that you can eliminate some of that uh, old hiss sound, that's a huge thing. Now, some people are going to want that hiss for the analog. You can get both, but I love that they've thought this out enough that they're able to do that. Um, number two, maintenance-wise, the fact that they were smart enough to put a toolkit in there with the oil, everything that you need to maintain this, that's one of the biggest problems is uh, you talk to, to any technician and they have seen a ton of these come across their desk that were just destroyed. And it's almost impossible to repair them once you let them go too far. So with proper maintenance, I think the fact that they give you that guide and tell you how to do it and, and give you the tools that you need, um, it's gonna make these units last a lot longer than the old ones uh, used to do. Um, and number three, the variety of sounds, being able to give you a way more sounds than is traditionally thought of on these. Um, this is this goes above and beyond the old Echo Rex. Um, I've played a lot of old Echo Rex. I gotta say, I am so impressed with the sound quality here. I think they nailed it and added so many features that you wish you would have on the old ones. Um, I, th I think ironically on the used market, this might bring down the price of the Echo Rex on the used market because wow, why, why would you pay $5,000 when you could pay $2,000 and get this? But that takes me to the cons because the first con is going to be the price. The fact that these are $2,100 retail, that is not going to be in a lot of people's budgets. There's going to be a lot of people that will not be able to afford these. I think they're going to be found more in studios. 
um, and in high-end rigs, you aren't going to see just a ton of these floating out there on a pedal board. And because of the price, it's going to be very hard to gig these. For, for me to want to go out to a bar and play with this where there's a chance of beer getting spilled on it, probably not going to happen. Like, I just don't see that. If it is, it needs to be sitting on top of your amp, like away in the back so that it doesn't get anything spilled on it. I think that's really the only solution there. Um, second con, um, nobody knows how to repair this specific unit yet. You know, so if they do break down, you're going to have a little trouble finding somebody to fix it. But honestly, they're so new by the time that that happens, I'm not really worried about that. And again, the fact that they give you the maintenance on there, it's the only part that really worried me about this. So is it a con? I, I don't know. I, I would say that's probably the biggest threat, but just one of those things to pay attention to. I'm sorry, my puppy just entered the room and now he wants some attention too. Um, but I, I really think those two are the true only cons of this. Um, otherwise, I really can't think of a negative. I, I, I like to give you three things. I can't think of a third con about this. I really think those are the only two negatives to hold you back. And really, it's just one. It's price is going to be hard. It is It is a lot of money. But when you consider that an old Benson Echo Rack right now on the used market, if it's in decent condition, could be anywhere from five to ten grand. Um, $2,100 is nothing comparatively. And the sound quality is fantastic. Um, so again, it's it's you get what you pay for. This is something special. It's something unique. Does every musician in the world need one? No, absolutely not. But I think if you have a studio or if you're looking for that old style sound and you're into analog effects, this is a must have. Absolutely, absolutely. T-Rex, you nailed it. You nailed it. I am so, so impressed. You guys are going to see this on a lot more videos from me. I am sure I'm going to be putting this in a ton of stuff. We're going to mix it with some harmonic trims, have some fun, come up with some new recipes for it. So you'll see this a lot in future videos. So stay tuned for those. Okay. Now, next week, we're going to have the video that I promised you this week. We are going to talk all about a uh, very, very, very special guitar that's uh, here in the studio now. You got to hear a little bit of it today, but I didn't talk much about it, but it was that uh, Les Paul that I was playing. So we'll talk about that next week. So please come back and join us then. Thank you all for joining me. Thanks again to Palin for helping support the channel. Um, and everyone, we really look forward to seeing you. Have a wonderful week and we'll see you soon. Take care.